Hello, and welcome to a first quick and dirty look at how to use Agora.jp. First off, what is Agora? Agora is a person-to-person -person sales website owned and operated by a Japanese company named Tsuriai, the novel feature of which is its payment method. Now, the payment method of Agora is a blockchain-based cryptocurrency called Eternity, the symbol for which is AE, and all sales, purchases, and bids are governed by a set of smart contracts. Now, the cryptocurrency world has been buried under scandals and scams for the last several years, and most people these days have come to focus on the crypto part and not the currency part that was originally the important thing about the name. Why? Because nobody, not in 14 years of blockchain operation, has gone to the trouble of making a normal, boring, family-friendly sales website that simply uses crypto as a drop-in replacement for other, more cumbersome payment methods, such as Visa or PayPal. I find this a little crazy, given that the entire point of a currency is to be able to buy and sell real things in the real world, but the financializers and scammers and con men of the world just can't help themselves from pooping all over mom's new rug, so here we are. Anyway, enough of that, let's get on with seeing how things actually work, shall we? So on the left I've got Chromium, and on the right I've got Firefox. Now this is going to be a guy, and this is going to be another guy. We'll probably just call him that. Something like that. So, uh, if I go to, now I have a shortcut there, but the URL is testnet.ogra.jp. Now you notice testnet. We're using the testnet version of the site because we don't want to use the agora.jp version of the site for an example because the testnet lets us use Monopoly money. The real site that's just this, that's a real site and the money would be real. So we're doing a test run but we're going to do it using, again, a testing, the testing version of the site. So um, we're going to do that on both of these. Uh, okay, so first thing you probably noticed is that everything is in Moonspeak. That's because it's a Japanese company. So we're going to click the Americanish flag to get Americanish instead of Japanish. Now we're going to notice that there's a login button. So we'll click that. And it's not translated, but it's saying it's looking for your wallet. Now we don't have a wallet. So we're going to see how to get one. Okay, it couldn't find your wallet. Oh, no. Uh, no, so no attorney wallets installed in the browser. These are like four basic reasons why it might not have worked. The bottom one, please note, mobile browsers are not yet supported. And that is a problem that you're going to have to take up with Google and Apple because they are not, um, how would you say it? They're not good actors in this space. So anyway, we're going to click the Get Superhero link. And we're using Chromium, so we're going to use the uh, Chrome extension on the Whatchamahuzit page for Chrome. Okay. Yes, add Chrome to... Okay, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, see? Now we've got our thingy up here. So it's saying... Yeah, okay. Click the icon and make it run. All right. So because we're going to be using this frequently, I'm going to click the pin right here because the pin will make it stick out all the time. So I need to generate a wallet. I mean, well, this is a wallet. I need to make an account is what I need to do. So agree to super. Yeah, sure. Okay. So create new wallet or restore existing wallet, restore existing wallet. Uh, there's a seed phrase that you can use to restore an existing wallet. So you can load it into any wallet um, or, or load any account into any wallet. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to just make a new one because we want to see how the, uh, the testnet faucet works. So there's a new account. There's no money in it. How much money? Zero. There's no money. Uh, so what we need to do first is we want to use the test net. So we're going to go change the wallet settings to be on the test net. Okay. All right, so now we're on the testnet with the wallet, and we want to go to a thing called the Faucet app. And what the Faucet lets us do, oh, I need to get my address. What the Faucet lets us do is send 5AE to any address that we happen to put in here. And that gives us the funds necessary to like play with basic features. Um, so we just copied our address, so we're gonna Copy, paste it into here, and then we're going to click top up. Now, 
the attorney blockchain is pretty fast. So you don't have to wait for a bunch of time to pass before funds show up like that. See, so it's, it makes it handy to play with. And we'll see how convenient that is in a second when we actually do purchases and sales. So what we're going to do is come back here. Now we have a wallet, got an account. We're going to click login. Now, no, you don't have to have money to log in, which I'll do over here just to demonstrate it. Um, all that has to happen is you have to prove that you own this key. So it what what's happening right now is it's asking to access the wallet. Is this website allowed to talk to your wallet? Yes or no? And we're going to say yes. Well, now that the website can talk to the wallet, the website was able to read our address so it can see your public ID. And it goes, okay, your ID is this. And this is a randomly generated message from the from the server side that we want you to sign. If you can sign this message and we can verify that you, that's your signature, then you can log in. So we're going to do that. That's a signature. We're going to send it back to the website. Now we have, okay, so it verified that and it created us a blank account. Now, uh, this little bit of these moon runes here, what they mean is um, anonymous number five. So we're the anonymous account number five. So we'll be uh, um, just some guy. Okay, that's who I'm going to be. Now, this is a display name. Your actual account is this, right? That's your real, your true account ID is this. Display name is just some guy. So contact information, uh, contact information could be anything. It could be a phone number, uh, Twitter account, social media account, um, email address. Most people put email, of course, but, you know, just in case. So, yeah, some, some email, that's fine. Um, then default location. Now, default location is going to dictate when I want to sell an item, where is the shipping location going to be? Because there's a lot, like every place on earth is in this list, so it's huge. Uh, so assigning your default location is kind of important to, to kind of help focus in on, you know, a single spot instead of having to try to find it from the list every time. So we're going to pick Osaka. Um, okay, so I'm uh, just some just some guy on the internet selling things. Okay, so that's going to be me. Okay, so this is our account page that we can see. Uh, other people have a similar view of us, but they can't see all the detail. Um, and over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to login. Same deal. Can't find the wallet. We're going to get the, oh no, page. And say, yeah, I see, oh no. Um, same thing. Okay, same thing that we saw before. So we're going to go to the superhero, the whatever, the Firefox version of the Wetchamahusit page. And once that comes up, that's interesting. Chrome showed me a Japanese page and Firefox didn't because like whatever. Okay, so we're gonna add it. Okay, see there it is. And no, I don't wanna use it in private tab. Well, maybe I do, I don't know. Bert goes out on that. So same process here. We're going to agree the terms of service which is basically saying, you know, superhero can't, you can't do anything to them. They can't do anything to you. Create a new wallet. Okay, now we got a new wallet. Same deal. We need to go to wallet settings. Change the network to testnet because we're using testnet now. So come back to the top of it. Okay. And we're once again going to go to faucetapps.com. Oh, I'm dumb. I need to get the, uh, <laughs> my, my address. It's in here. Okay. So we're going to copy that. Okay. So put our address in there. Give me money. Oh, I should have showed you that you could sign in without money, but it doesn't matter. You can, you don't need any tokens to be able to uh sign. it doesn't cost anything to sign into the account into the uh into the site so okay so now we've got 5ae so now we're going to click login again this time oh look it found the uh it found the wallet same thing it's going to say can it can this page talk to your thingy you're going to say yes um and you only have to do this one time the allow access thing is only that's a one-time deal so now it read our public key you can see that so this pops up next uh 
And now it's asking us for that signature. The reason this confirm button is not instant, even though Superhero actually doesn't need to talk to the network at all to be able to do a message signature, um, just the way that this wallet is written is it's always going to like check your account balance, you know, on, on the network, whichever network you're connected to. So anyway, well, okay, just some other guy. Okay, contact information, some other guy. Like I said, this can be arbitrarily anything. It is a good idea to put some real information in here just in case there's a problem and the, you know, the, the company that runs this needs to talk to you. Um, but, you know, whatever. It's up, up to you. So uh, we'll be in American Samoa. That's kind of an exotic place. Um, just some guy on an island near the international dateline. Okay. Okay, so... I'm this guy, I'm just some other guy, and I am just some guy. We see three things here that are for sale. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, that's interesting. 278. So the the thing with the bag of rice, you're always going to see one bag of rice for sale on Agora anywhere you go. On, on the mainnet, too, um, there's a bag of rice for sale. The reason is that the company that runs this indexes the value of AE against a real commodity price. Now that is derived from the fiat price of yen, uh, you know, the, the price of rice in yen, but they multiply that out so that the actual price that they're, um, when whenever they adjust this, that way when they like pay workers in AE or whatever, um, which they can do, um, they can rate, rate that and say, well, this is actually tied to the price of rice. It's not tied to the price of fiat, just in case something goes crazy with fiat which you know we're come like next year there's probably gonna be some weird things with fiat so it's 2022 when i'm talking about this right now next year there's a possibility some weird things will happen with fiat so they're doing that kind of as a backstop that the workers don't get screwed and they don't get screwed so it's a mutual protection kind of thing so anyway sales website so let's sell something we click sell uh i'm gonna sell um a, a bicycle helmet It'll be a it'll be a kids kids bicycle helmet, and we're gonna sell it. It needs to be within the price range that this guy's got, right? So we're gonna sell it for two AE, just to just an example. Um, the category will be sports stuff, so bicycle. Um, let's see, uh, kids helmet, sports, whatever. Bicycle, sure, okay. So these are tags that'll be, they help navigation, clustering. Not that big of a deal when there's not a bunch of stuff on. So we're gonna put our images up. Um, a kid's bike helmet. Looks like a shark because it does, okay. So this is like their version of a CAPTCHA. What's the sum of eight and six? 14. Submit that to the site. And the image processor takes a second because the test nets on very low hardware. And that's that. So we've got a sales item created. And if we go to the top, it's not here. Well, the reason it's not there, there's two reasons it's not there. One, it's not approved yet. Second, because, you know, somebody could have just posted a rocket launcher for sale, uh, for all we know, right? Um, if this was a rocket launcher or, like, trying to sell a baby or something freaking crazy like that, you know, bags of cocaine, not okay on this site. Um, so, this is a normal thing. They will approve it. Uh, the second reason that this is not visible on the front page is that the only sales that somebody can interact with are sales that have a status of open and they are on chain so has to be approved to be shown on the front page and it has or navigation pages rather and it has to have a status of open because if it's there's four four statuses there's um open there's negotiation there's hold which prevents the buyer from uh taking the money if the you know if the price of the of currency changed suddenly we'll look at that in a second 
Um, and there is done, complete. So there's there's four possible states for this to be in. It has to be open, and when it's open, a bidder is allowed to bid on it and try to buy it. So this is an unapproved sale that is not posted to the chain. And if we, because this is our sale, if we look at the top here, sale administration, we see post contract to chain is an option. So in the other dream realm here, I'm going to approve that. Also look at Navig, just real quick. We're gonna look at navigation here. Um, my sales, I've got these three numbers here, zero, one, zero. Those correlate to approved items, which is a list of zero things, unreviewed items, a list of one thing, and rejected items, which is a list of zero things. So if I click my unreviewed items, I see that there. Now, this is going to get reviewed real quick. And it's going to be a look good to me. Okay, so now it's an approved item. And if we go back up here, we'll see it's moved into the first slot. Approved items. Okay, now we want to put it on chain, which we could have done earlier before it was approved. But anyway, now we're going to post a contract to the chain. Now this is going to involve a signature and this is going to cost us a little teeny tiny amount of gas. Less than one cent, but you know, this costs less than a penny to do, but it does cost some gas. So to do this on the main net site, you need to have at least a tiny amount of AE to do it. Okay, so this is the this is the contract signature thing. So the network we're talking to is AE UAT. That's the testnet ID. Mainnet is AE underscore mainnet. Uh, transaction ID one, that, that's not important. That's always ID one, just because. Um, the unsigned data here, this is a contract call to post a contract, which unfortunately we don't have a way of like, we can show the details here, but it's like, you can see the nonce, you can see the contract that you're calling. Fortunately though, this, this website will show us all this stuff uh, once we put the transaction through. So we're going to submit. This is a contract call. It's going to go on chain. And what we see is it says red, open, but it's in red because this is a transaction ID. If we click the transaction ID, it's probably already gone through. Maybe we can catch it before it does. Okay, so this is what they look like when they're in, when they're in transit. Um, what we can see here is if we press F5 to refresh the page, this will be open already on chain probably. Yeah, okay, so this is already open on chain. And this is the contract, this is the sales contract ID itself, which we can click on, again, go back to the Explorer and we can see the contract itself. And we can see that one sale has been called. The function that was called is post sale. This is the, this is our address. Um, this is the uh, the address of uh, of just some guy, and we see it here twice, which is part of a feature that will come in later in the future. Um, the idea of the sale, and this is the price. Now, this is the complete price. So we we put two AE right, two AE, but a one AE is a whole is actually like a whole bunch of Edos. So this is how many Edos is two AE. Uh, so anyway. This is like public now. This is this is available for sale. So if we go up here, hey, it showed up on the main page now. If we go over here and F5 that, hey, it just showed up. Now because this showed up, we can go click buy. Look at that. And this guy doesn't get buy, but he has sale administration. This guy does not have sale administration, but he does have a buy option. Okay, so Let's uh let's sell a bicycle seat from this guy real quick, and we'll we'll do sales back and forth to each other real quick. So bicycles, uh, oh, whoop. hang on. Bicycle child seats. Price is going to be one point one AE because it's not as cool as the shark thing. Let's be fair. Um, this is also going to be in where's the bicycle thing? There we go. Uh, yeah, from American Samoa. Images seat Oop, okay seat um child seat whatever uh kids so uh bicycle child seat i can't spell at all look at that 
bicycle child seat. Um, what six plus one is seven. Okay, submit. And okay, now same thing. If we go over here, we don't see that because this is not approved. Now, whereas we got this approved, the the helmet we have that approved by the site, and then we post it to contract. We can post this to we can post the contract to the chain right now. Um, oh, hey, look, wrong network. See that? So that's a good thing to know. Hmm. Now what is going on here? On the testnet site. Let's see if we can actually do the testnet here. Yeah. Let's make sure that we've got this is the test map. I wonder if the wallet's ID of like what network it was connected to was wrong because I went too fast earlier. Okay, so here we go. Looks like a bug in Super here that we need to report. Anyway, so we're here. One really good thing about that, actually, is that you can't, the worst thing that can happen on chain is that you can not be able to sign something, but you can't just lose money, which is really good. So we're going to submit this. Okay, now this is posted. Now watch how fast this thing posts. That's already on chain now. That's how quick it is. So like it's, it's faster than Visa, which is kind of frustrating. Um, Okay, so now the administrator is going to review this real quick. Done. Okay, now that's done. We refresh the page. It's here. And if we go to the top page, it's there too. Okay. Yay. All right. So um, now because this is just some other guy's item, he can't buy it, but he can't administer it. Um, note, uh, if you edit the sale info, that's just editing this stuff. Really simple. If you want to update the price, oh, also notice on the edit part, you can't change the images because they don't want to do review after review. They don't want to put the whole thing back in the review queue just because of an image change, right? Um, which may have to happen because people put crazy images up uh, because it's the internet and people are terrible. So if you want to make, if you want to change images, just delete the item, cancel the sale completely, take it off chain and then make a new one with the better images, whatever you want to show. Um, update price, note that update price, because we're on chain, update price involves a contract call. Um, so so that's a that's the thing you have to keep in the back of your mind. So let's uh, try to buy this helmet here. So we're gonna buy the helmet. Buying the helmet is a bid. What happens with this is the helmet costs, what, two AE, is that right? Yeah, it costs 2 AE. So to be able to register our bid, we have to put 2 AE into 
the purchase contract. So we're going to confirm that we want to do that. In this register, now Nego, again, we're in this in-between state where we have posted a transaction, but it has not gotten to the chain yet. So we hit F5, it will have probably posted already. Okay, it has. So what we get now is this page tur turns into like a chat message. So um, this is, we're in negotiation right now. So if this guy goes here, he sees this too, but other users that are not logged in or whatever, they can't see this stuff. This is all private to, this is private to the buyer and the seller only. So the buyer can place a hold on the item, which will stop him from be able to, being able to take that 2AE out of the contract. So if you place a hold, you're saying, wait, I want to buy this. I, I'm serious enough that I put money into the contract, but I don't want you to be able to take it out yet because we need to talk about the price. So for example, now maybe this guy says, uh, oh, you're in Osaka and I'm in, you know, shipping from Osaka, but this guy was in American Samoa. Well, you know, how much will it cost to ship to American so Samoa? Okay, so, right. So that becomes a thing, and he says, uh, it will cost 1.1 AE. I'll adjust the price. Okay, so he has not accepted this yet because he wants to increase the price to cover the shipping cost, right? So he's going to adjust the price, which is going to, it's going to require a contract call. So we're going to adjust the price to 3.1. AE. And like I said, you know, it's contract call, so you have to do this. You have to go through the process of actually calling on chain. Um, okay, and it hit already. So this has gone through on chain. So all of these messages from the system, you'll see this is a system message, and then this is from just some other guy, this is from just some guy, the system message again. Um, we adjusted the price from 2 to 3.1 and the bid, the current bid that's actually funded is only 2. So the unfunded amount is 1.1 AE and this guy can see that as well now. So if he wants to update the bid, updating the bid is going to cost him another 1.1 AE to put into the contract to, you know, plus it up to being 3 which is what this is. So we're going to confirm that. And here we go. So now the bid is 3.1 and they both see that. And this guy says, thanks, shipping it. Okay. And if this, if the seller accepts the bid, what happens is he will get this 3.1 AE and then he will be given a shipping form that he should fill out with, with tracking data, whatever tracking information. So he's submitting this to get the AE. Now the AE... 3.1 plus the 5 he had, he should have like 8.1 AE, right? Once this connects, we will see it. There we go. Oh, 8.04. The reason for the 8.04 is that the site takes 2%. That's their overhead. Compare that to eBay takes 13%. Visa takes 3 to 5%. PayPal takes significantly more. So you can lose up to like a quarter of your sale value just to site operators right now. If you do this through eBay or Etsy or whatever, Amazon takes a sizable cut as well. Um, so th there's a 2% take that this site will, that um, Agora takes. So they take 2%, that's why it's not 8.1. Um, it's close, but it's not 8.1. So anyway, uh, so that's it. Shipping it. Once this is accepted, so bid accepted, that's on chain. Tracking link, tracking number, schedule, enter delivery day. So you'd say uh, if I'm the seller, 
this should be arriving on uh, whatever, whenever next Thursday is. What, 15th? I'm assuming that's right. This is fake, but still it'd be weird if I did it wrong. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Um, so, uh, tracking URL for whoever, uh, FedEx. And you would put the FedEx tracking number. Whatever, whatever the URL is, right? You, so you want to give the, the receiver, the guy who bought stuff from you, you want to give him as much information as necessary to, to track the item um, so that he feels good about it. Because if he doesn't, he's going to give you a bad review and then, you know, you're going to have a hard time ever selling anything again. So item shipped. So product shipped actually changes status. Uh, and that's what this guy sees now. After the product is shipped, now you can continue chatting to each other. Um, so maybe, maybe this guy says, thanks. He wants to thank you for having shipped it. It shows up in the, in the log here, right? So this is a big, the sales interaction log, um, the sale review after the guy gets the item and he's really happy with it, you know, um, what was this? The helmet? Yeah. So, uh, thanks. This is the best thing ever. Okay. So he received it. Now it could be received, returned, recalled, or abandoned, but received accelerating is excellent because it's the best thing ever. And so he's going to submit that. And this is going to kill the sale, right? At this point, the sale item will be closed. It will be an archived issue. And we will see where to find that in a second. But this chat log, all this event log and chat and stuff, this is just going to go away. Gone. Um, this is not kept by the site. The images are not kept by the site. None of that stuff is kept by the site. The most basic information about the sale and the score system, the price of it, things like that that help you assess the trustworthiness of a seller and the trustworthiness of a buyer uh, make sure somebody's not just shilling crazy purchases to to like you know mess up people's uh rating scores um anyway that's all that's all that's kept so when we submit this that's going to end the sale this this concludes the whole thing so this is it we're in the purchase history for this guy this stuff is all gone now if if we if we f5 this page if we refresh this page um we won't, you know, we won't get the, the thing that we're looking for. Um, so we're going to go to sale archive. For the, so sale archive, this is something he sold. We have a sale archive. And for him, it's a purchase history. But it's the same stuff. It's the same archive. So the sale data is that it's a kid's bicycle helmet, the seller, contract, blah. Purchase history, this was the buyer, this is the, like the timestamps for everything that happened are here. And then the outcome and the score. Now this has just changed the, the score of the seller himself has just changed. Um, so he's got a score of 5.0, a perfect score so far because he's got one review and it was a five. Okay, so... We can go through that again real quick uh, with this item. We can try to buy it. Well, before we try to buy that, if you try to buy an item that you don't have enough money for, it won't let you buy it and you'll get stupid little animations about not having enough money. Um, so the site tries to keep you from getting into like the weird situations where you've submitted a contract that are just going to fail because that's just dumb or submit a contract. Uh, a contract call that it's only just going to fail. So it tries to catch some things like that for you to help you out. Um, anyway, so if we go through the purchase uh, pattern for this, we want to buy it. We're going to sign this, submit it. It's on chain now. This guy, oh, if you just go look at your, if you look at your, um, this is worth looking at real quick. When you click your name and you've got that list of things that you're involved in or things you have been involved in, this guy wants to buy it. So open purchase bids. Notice that 
because it is in negotiation status, it has disappeared from the top page. It is visible here. This guy can find his, his open purchase bids right here. So buys a negotiation, agreed purchases, and incoming items. So there's like a step through process. So if, if the shipper ships something to you, you find it here. Um, if somebody has bid on an item, you go to your engaged sales as a seller and sales negotiations up here, agreed sales are down here, same, that's agreed purchases, agreed sales, and then outgoing items and income items that will show up in the same spot. So we'll go here and we're just gonna accept the bid like thanks. Now, of course, normally there's going to be some communication between these two because they need to exchange, you know, information about where's this getting shipped to and so on. Okay. So we're going to accept the bid, which we already know requires. This kind of a confirmation. Submit. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so the bid's on chain now. Note, I'm just hitting F5 to refresh this because every time you have a pending thing like that, um, the back end checks the chain real quick to see if the, if the uh, transaction actually got mined on chain or not. Um, if it did, then it shows up here. So bid accepted, cool. So uh, here is tracking number, um, you know, HTTPS, fake, non-existent shippers okay so that'll be the uh, the item is shipped and so this guy's over here uh, he says oh that that was great thanks so so much we okay so again sales item is done same thing over here this sales item is done um, so that this guy has sold something and this guy's bought something. This guy sold the child seat and he bought the child helmet. This guy sold the bike helmet and he bought the child seat. And the more items you sell, they just show up at the bottom. And then, you know, if there's a whole bunch of them, there's like pagination and that's it. Um, anyway, that's it. There's, there's not a whole lot of extra stuff to say about this. Um, you know, that's the whole, that's the whole process right there. And, uh, that's all we've got. Um, thank you for watching. If you're paying attention to this, uh, if you got to the end, that's cool. The, again, the, the main net site where you would do real buys and sells is agora.jp. It is open for business. Uh, there are not yet, um, explanation video this is the first kind of quick and dirty explanation video but there's not a a library of help files and tutorials and explainers and all that stuff especially not in english yet um so this is the first one just kind of explaining what happens demonstrating it here so that you can see but this is the real one this is agora.jp that is a real mainnet site with real money so don't throw silly stuff away they do look identical so be careful um and this is the test net one Test net, go to the faucet, get a couple of AE, play around with, you know, the features or whatever, um, get comfortable with it. Uh, the same way that I just did open two browsers, play with it, see what the weird cases are. Um, you know, figure out what the process is for yourself, uh, before you come do a real sales item here. But, uh, I would, I mean, this is, we just did several on-chain transactions and they were like that quick the main net is just as fast um it's super cheap to use really really slick system so this turned out being a lot smoother than using visa or paypal uh and that is that's really saying something so um I'm quite impressive with how well eternity works to handle this particular case still shocked that nobody's ever done this before but hey this is the world we live in scammers are crazy they're just terrible so um you know forget about the scammers forget about the crazy people do real business and this is one way that you can do real business if you are an online retailer you can use crypto for real and that's that's a fantastic thing so this is really a new world that we're coming into probably nobody will notice this for quite a while but i wanted to put this video up just to get it out 
um, while we're working on uh, actual like explainers, and tutorials, and you know, getting a little bit of publicity around us. Uh, so anyway, give it a shot. Uh, thanks for listening. I will catch you guys online later.